Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project today. Now this one's going to be a little bit different than my usual sort of video or sewing video here on the channel because for this time I did not, uh, for this project I did not draft the pattern all by myself. That's right, I used a commercial pattern. Everyone get excited, get hyped. Um, the only thing is I used a commercial pattern from 1943, so it's not readily available really. Um, you probably can find it online. That's why I picked this up. I bought this pattern on Etsy. And from what I can tell in my research, I think it is from 1943. I can't find an exact date on the pattern envelope or anything like that, but on the vintage pattern like resources I found online, it seems to list this pattern as something from 1943. So I grabbed this McCall's pattern mostly because I don't have a lot of experience making trousers myself, making pants. I think I did it a couple times back in college at university as like assignments where we were required to make trousers, but I just really haven't uh, done much since then. So I've made a couple of pairs in my sewing life. I've sewn a lot of skirts and dresses and tops and things like that in my lifetime here, but I have not made very many pairs of trousers, so I'm not super confident drafting patterns for them all by myself or from scratch. It's just not something I have a lot of experience with. So I wanted to go ahead and try and use a pattern for this. And then I also wasn't really happy with a lot of the fit of trousers I've been finding. Like I can find high-waisted trousers sort of like in the wild out of thrift stores, and they look okay and they fit okay, but they... They definitely are from the 80s, they're not from the 40s, and I wanted a proper 1940s fit. And I figured the best way to try that would be to try an actual 1940s pattern and basically replicate a pair of trousers from the 40s to be able to try that 40s fit and see if I liked it better. Of course, I did run into a couple of problems using this rather ancient pattern, but I will jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and show you what I mean. All right, everyone, here we are on the blue patterning table of doom so that I can go ahead and explain to you um, kind of the steps I took after I got this vintage pattern pattern vintage pattern in the mail. So this is McCall's printed pattern 5169 Ladies Mrs. Slacks Ensemble. Um, this one I believe is a size 18. I don't even remember. So this is a size 18. Of course many vintage patterns, um, most, uh, came in one size as opposed to now where we have many sizes pin printed on the same tissue. So this is the pattern here and of course I just wanted cute slacks although this is a very cute blouse as well so maybe we should make that sometime. But until then I want these guys. Um, I've been dying for some proper high-waisted trousers that fit the way I actually want them to. A lot of the ones I find at the thrift store don't fit the way I'd like, and I, even then I find it hard to find them. So they're hard to find and I don't like the fit. So time to just make my own 1940s style trousers. So I went ahead and I bought this pattern online. Now normally, we you know, I draft my own patterns, but I have only ever made maybe two pairs of trousers in my whole life as a seamstress. I've been sewing for 15 maybe 18 years? I don't even remember how. It's been a long time. Since I was like 12, so over 15 years I've been sewing. In that time I've made two pairs of trousers, I think. One, uh, both for class probably. So I'm not very comfortable making trouser patterns. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. And so I decided to go ahead and just um, take the opportunity to use a vintage pattern, which is something I haven't done here on my channel before. Um, I've never used a vintage pattern before. So this is a fun experiment here. Now, when I bought this pattern, which I bought online on Etsy, they did say that it was complete, meaning all the pieces were still in here. Um, and indeed, all the pieces were in here, and they're all cut out. Unfortunately, however, the most important part here, the trouser pattern, arrived... I mean, I have both pieces, but there were some bits missing. So as you can see, I have just gone ahead and traced a copy of this pattern in, onto my alphanumeric paper. They recommend, I believe it's considered common practice, to always trace your vintage patterns, because, especially because this pattern, I think, is from 19... 46 or 47, I don't exactly remember off the top of my head right now. It's been a few weeks since I bought it, but this, you know, it's very fragile. So it's best to just trace a copy and then put the tissue paper back safely away. So um, I went ahead to go and try and trace a copy of this trouser pattern, um, which was going all fine and dandy until I noticed that some bits were missing. So if you imagine this is the cut line, this is the seam allowance. Unfortunately, here we are missing a bit, but I could still sort of see the seam allowance guide. So I figured, I kind of like fudged it, I made it up. I just filled in what seemed to be missing here on the trouser front. So that was the front here. Um, luckily that is very easy to kind of patch in because I still had the guideline of the seam allowance line. I could really quite easily guess what that was supposed to look like. The back on the other hand, we had similar problems. Um, up here this is starting to deteriorate, but that was fine. I could still see what I was supposed to trace for my darts and things. However, here we can see the seam allowance line again, but then, but then it goes away. 
And so from all of this back crotch area, um, all from like the waist to the like under side of the crotch uh, was missing. So again, I have a little bit of seam allowance indication line here and a little bit up there. And I kind of had to just guesstimate where that would have been like it's kind of the angle of this curve seemed to be going like this, but there seemed to be a little bit cut away here. And there are not pin marks in this otherwise from other pattern pieces. It seems like this person never even made these items, whoever cut this out. And I just want to say why you, why you do this to me. It's like they started to make modifications and then never use these pants. I don't know. So I had to kind of fudge that, make it up. The whole point of buying a pattern was that I wouldn't have to uh, do it from scratch and guess on seams like this one that I'm not comfortable doing. Um, sort of like the whole crotch area and seat of the pant and all that is like stuff I didn't want to bother with fitting. And here I am. Apparently fate was like, haha, you, you thought you could cheat and buy a trouser pattern, but no, you're still going to have to sort of guess and hope for the best. So that's what I did from this area up. And then again, along here, along the inseam, again, we have down here the seam allowance line for a little bit, but then it's just cut away again. So I didn't know how far out this was supposed to come. So I really just guesstimated using the curve of this to try and guess what this area would look like. So I have my little patches in here, here, and then along the front. Um, the rest of the pattern was intact, so I traced it as is. And I wanted to go ahead and just make these up as they come, because it's supposed to be a 30-inch waist, and I have a 30-ish waist. On my best days, I have a 30-inch waist, although sometimes it's more of a 31 or a 32, depending on, you know, different points of the month, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but on my thinnest days, I am a size 30 waist, so I figured these wouldn't be too, too bad, and if I had to size them up a little bit, it wouldn't be terrible. So I went ahead and decided to try and make these just as they are and make a muslin. So here's the first muslin that I made, the first pair of trousers I made directly from the pattern, just using the 1940s pattern straight out of the tissue, basically. And you can see um, the fit is quite tight. Um, so I, I knew I needed to loosen this up a little bit here through the hips, especially because the baggy hip thing was more of a thing in the 40s. So I knew I needed to make a few adjustments to this muslin here, but this was the first out of the tissue envelope. I was very happy with most of the fit. Um, I felt very confident in being able to move forward using this pattern. Overall, they fit quite well. I'm actually really happy with the way that like the crotch and the seat and everything fit. Um, so I'm really pleased to be able to move forward with this without that many adjustments to be made. Um, I did see on Angela Clayton's 1940s pants video, which she's using a different pattern number, but the pattern looks almost identical to these, honestly. Um, so definitely go check out her video if you haven't seen it. I'm sure most of you already watch her lovely channel. But what she did to adjust the size on very similar pants was she just went ahead and added on what she needed to the side mostly. So I don't need that much extra. Uh, like per pattern piece basically. I'm just gonna be adding on an extra half inch along the side seams of my pants to see if that will help these fit exactly as I need. Again, I don't need them to be that much larger. So that's what I'm gonna be going with here. I also do, kind of, these tucks are so shallow. I kind of want, again, another way to add a little bit more ease in the front of these pants um, or trousers would be to have these tucks be larger. So I kind of want to figure out a way to split this all the way, all the way down the pant and then add in another quarter inch per tuck, just so that the tucks are a little bit deeper. And that will again, again add a half inch on each side of the pant as well. So I will have the half inch plus a half inch to one inch on each side. It's gonna be adding a lot of ease in here. And I will be pick making another muslin pair to see if that will fit, just in case I'm ending up adding too much or anything like that. I also kind of want to switch the way the pocket is done. These are inseam pockets, as you can see, which if I did them correctly would be nice enough, but it does kind of like flap open here over the hips. And I saw on American Duchess Lauren of American Duchess's, um, one of her an older posts from her blog, she shows how to change uh, these kind of things into uh, like a shaped pocket instead, instead of having an inseam pocket to do it in a shaped sort of scoop out pocket here on the fronts. And I kind of want to switch over to those kind of pockets and then do top stitching and make some truly great like safari ready 1940s cotton twill trousers. So those are gonna be our first like wearable mock-up after I do another muslin. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a half inch along the sides of this using scraps of paper that I keep around. So I'm gonna add a half inch along here. This actually was too high waisted for me as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off a half inch from the very top of this just because you can see where it was like folding while I had it on my body. Just a little bit too high waisted, especially with a wider waistband like this. And then they do suggest either a slide fastener like I have here or snaps along the side. I think I will go ahead and use a zipper 
but uh, the seam allowance is so shallow, it's only half inch that I might have to, it, they suggest adding facings to this area, but I might just cut the seam allowance a little wider <laughs> from like here up so that I can put the zipper in the way I would prefer. This is just a lapped zipper lapping towards the back and then I'll do probably a button up here as well. So I'll have to make the waistband a bit longer. So I'll be adding a lot of ease throughout here. So hopefully the next pair will fit even better than these ones did. But the first out of the package muslin pair fit actually quite well. And I was super pleased with that. So I'm going to go ahead and make those modifications and I'll show you. All right. So I've just finished making the modifications to the pattern here on the back. All I did was lower this a half inch and I didn't readjust the darts in any way because they fit otherwise. Um, so they'll just be a little bit shorter. Um, I didn't like move the darts down, which is what I did for the tucks in the front. But um, for the back, I just took that half inch off the top here and then added a half inch all along the outer edge of the pant here. Um, I also did also add on an inch uh, and a quarter to the back of this because this was a quarter of an inch shorter than the front for whatever reason. And I wanted to add another inch to the hem. So I added an inch and a quarter to the back here. And then I added an inch to the hem in the front as well. Um, so that will match up again. And again, I added that half inch all along the side here, took this down a half inch. I did go ahead and like erase the original um, tuck markings and then redraw them in so they will still be the same length. There won't be a half inch short. The last thing I did on the front here was I squared a line all the way down the pant, making sure to keep it very straight from here at the top all the way down to the cuffs or like the end of the pant. Um, squared a line all the way down, cut all along that and added in a <laughs> quarter of an inch in between so that there's more width in the pant in general, but also just that these tucks will be bigger. So like that width won't be added onto the waist because it'll still be tucked in here, but it will be added throughout the pant. Um, I don't really, hopefully that won't cause problems. I really just want the tucks to be bigger because they were so small. So we'll see how that goes in this second muslin here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another pair of these pants out in muslin and sew them up. Here is the second muslin I made after I made some adjustments to the pattern, adding those um, that extra ease to the tucks in the front, adding a little bit to the size of the pattern, and then of course trying out the pockets for the first time, um, or the front like flat pockets. I made the pockets much too shallow and small, so I learned very quickly here that I needed to make the pa uh, pockets bigger. So I went ahead and just drew those on how I wanted them to be with a marker onto this muslin, and that's what you're seeing here. But the second muslin fits a little bit better. Okay, so for the next muslin, with my now modified and larger pattern. I also wanted to try a different style of pocket instead of the like inseam pockets, I wanted to do flat pockets, I guess, in front. Um, and to do this, I used, um, or I looked, referenced a post um, from American Duchess on their blog, on Lauren's blog, I suppose. Um, it's an older post from her, so we can say that it was Lauren. It was before American Duchess, probably, um, before when it was just a blog, um, but I went ahead and followed her sort of instructions for how to do a pocket like this. So basically this, you'll be able to put your hand in here, you know, um, but you have to cut away from your pattern, but I did save the piece if I want to make these pants with no pockets, which for one pair I have planned, I do. Um, so I will put this piece back on up here. But of course this has seam allowance so that I can have a little pocket like so. Um, I've never done a pocket like this before, on trousers at least. So I didn't realize how small this is <laughs> or how short it is. And I'll show you in the muslin in just a second as well. But the way this is done is that, of course, you need to fill this back in, but you have a pocket in between here. So the pocket looks like this. So there's like the pocket lining and then there's the pocket itself. So like this is like where the bag of the pocket is in here. And then this gets sewn here and then possibly top stitched or edged it faced in a, some nice way. And then this all gets sewn in here and then when you put the when you do the uh side seam it gets caught in the side seam of course and then you just treat it as if once you have the pocket on there you kind of just treat it as if this piece had never been cut away basically and then the rest of it gets held in by the waistband and it's all good to go but i needed to come down like here and here is my second muslin for this trouser patterning project here um this was the first one sitting over here and here is the second muslin that I made today with those cute little pockets. So they would look like this, um, but they're just far too small. Like you can't, it's um, not deep enough this way either. It's only about an inch in. I think I need it to be farther because you stick your hand in and it gets stuck really quickly. Um, and they're just not, not big enough. And if you're making your own pockets, you might as well make them large. 
Um, so I wanted to come down further so that the pocket starts much lower because this is so small. Um, so on this side I was drawing with a marker. You know how I like to draw on my mock-ups and on my paper and stuff like that. Um, so you can see the original pocket, the first one I did in here. So I'm going to have this come down much farther. The red line is the one I'm going with here. Uh, much farther here and then I'm going to have it come out about half an inch further at least um, underneath these tucks and then I will have it come deeper as well. So you can, I want to be able to at least put, put my phone in here or something like that if I'm wearing these pants. Um, not just to have pockets to put my hands in, but to be able to put something in there as well. What a wild idea. The other thing I kind of want to do, the only other change I want to make from this, which they fit much better, and I'm totally pleased with that, um, is I think on these front tucks, on the inner more tuck, this is the center front, I want to sew it down a little bit further. So the tuck I want to sew down to here instead of up here, just to keep things nice and flat in front. So I think that's the only other modification I need to make at this point to this one. Um, and then I will go ahead and make a pair in this twill I have sitting up here um, for the true zookeeper safari vibes that you know I like so much. Um, this is just a very inexpensive, slightly stretch cotton twill from Mood. I picked it up um, on super sale. I think it was like $4 a yard or something like that. And I did get a bunch of it because it was so cheap. Um, so. If these don't work out, I won't be too, too disappointed. I'll have enough to make another pair uh, if I wanted to. But these fit so well, and these modifications aren't drastic. Um, so I think they should work. Um, and I can't decide if I want to put a cuff on these, or if I just want to hem them at the, like, the perfect height for wearing with flats. Um, but that decision doesn't need to be made right now, so I shan't. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and fix this pattern tonight. Um, yesterday I made the first muslin, today I made this one, tomorrow I think I will start on these, and once I am done with these and I like it, and I've kind of confirmed everything, I want to make another pair that are nicer in this lovely wool, suiting wool that I got from Mood exactly for this purpose. So this is a darker camel colored suiting wool from moodfabrics.com, and I got some lining so I can line these wool pants of course. And this pair I will make with no pockets, actually, um, just because I want them to be more of a formal situation and smooth and nice. Um, and I think this will, it's a lighter weight wool, so it'll drape really nicely where these tucks are. Whereas I think it's going to look very poofy and strange in the heavier weight twill. But poofy and strange, again, isn't so inaccurate for this kind of thing. So we're going to go with it. But these are going to be much more drapey and fun. All right, so I have adjusted the pocket to a lower depth. Not sure if I show that or not. Um, so I have a bigger pocket now. I mean, I kind of have to just try that on <laughs> this pair. Um, it's going to be kind of a wearable muslin, hopefully. I did switch over to this olive brown green-ish kind of twill because it's a lighter weight and has a better drape. Um, I think it's just going to work better for this style of trouser. I'm a little afraid to use something so thick. That other twill, it's called, uh, online it was called a sateen-faced twill, but it's just quite thick and almost like it feels like a cotton canvas um, or like a thicker denim. And I just don't know how that fabric will work in this kind of pant. Um, I've seen like utility kind of trousers in my catalog and stuff like that, but I'd rather just test out this pattern on a lighter weight twill first. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, so I've got this all pinned down on here. Another thing I wanted to note when it comes to cutting out trousers is it's very important to have them be on the straight grain. I mean, you can have bias cut trousers, but um, if you have the grain a little kind of off, um, a lot of times it'll make the legs twist a bit, and uh, you just want to avoid that if you can. So um, the way I do that, this is this line here on this pattern is copied over from the tissue pattern, the 1940s version um, tissue pattern. This is the line that you're supposed to crease in the pants, and it's also like the straight grain of the pant. So what I do is I trace onto the, this is the wrong side of the fabric, I trace that line in chalk and line up the pattern along that line just to try and ensure I get a straight cut or drape or hang on these as much as I can uh, because I know that is something that is important when doing trousers. I feel like I learned that one the hard way back in college when I was making trousers and I was like, why is the front leg twisting a little? I can't ever get it perfect and people were like, it's because you're not cutting it on the straight grain. So something to keep in mind when making trousers. All right, here I am. I've cut out my trousers and now I am marking the darts on the back here and then I have marked the tucks in a similar fashion on the front. Um, sewing darts and tucks isn't that dissimilar. 
Um, I don't do tucks very often, and I always am sewing darts here. And here I am sewing these ones in the back of these trousers on each side. So just two darts, just marked those in colored pencil. You know how I am. Um, and then I just tied off my darts like I usually do. I had a color of thread that was almost a perfect match for this, but not exactly. Um, and I also didn't have a greenish brown zipper. I only had a brown zipper. So I ended up going with a brown one because we're doing, we're making do, you know, here in lockdown with some materials. So uh, my thread isn't a perfect match and neither is my zipper for this project. But again, it's not like I can go and pop out to the shops right now. So just sewed my darts as usual. And then for the tucks in the front, um, it's almost exactly like sewing a dart. You'd start at the top and kind of sew way down the line, except for instead of coming to a point, you just come to an end basically and just backstitch. And then you have your little tuck in there. All right, so I've just sewn all the tucks and the darts into the trousers. And then I went ahead and um, ironed the, or pressed the darts towards the center and the tucks towards the center as well. And then I set those over by my serger so I can serge the edges of them. But now I'm just looking at my pockets here. So this is the part of the pocket that shows, that becomes part of the trouser. This is the part of the pocket that is obviously from here down is inside the trouser. Um, again, this is not the world's largest or like deepest pocket really. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this quilting cotton that I have left over from a recent project to be like the bags facing whatever this is called <laughs> inside of my pocket here. And then I'm, this is thin enough that I'm not, well, it's not super thin, but it's thin enough that I'm not too worried about having that as the back end of the pocket. So for this, um, again, this is like one, two, and then the trouser is the third piece here. Um, I do kind of have to wrap my brain around <laughs> how to sew these things um, because, you know, part of me wants to line this up on the other side, but um, I think it has to go like this. We're, we'll find out if I'm disastrously wrong and I'm thinking about everything backwards. Um, I only did this in the muslin, so each side is the same and didn't matter. Uh, I think I can go ahead and sew around the outside of these and then this being the right side gets sewn to the pant and then you'll see how that works out after in a minute. Um, but first of all, I'm going to go ahead and sew around the outside edge of this. I don't have to sew up here because that'll get caught in the seam. I don't have to sew across here because that'll get caught in the waistband, but I just need to sew around this edge here. So just sewing that pocket lining to the back of the pocket here. And look at me, I'm trying to be good, remove pins. I'm trying to remember when I can because I, um, I, I know people get so uh, perturbed seeing me sew over my pins, but uh, I don't always remember, let's be honest. With the pockets started, I went ahead and took the other pieces now with the tucks and the darts sewn in over to my serger and I just ran along the inseam and the outside side seam of the trousers with the serger just to give a little bit of extra sturdiness or support to those seams. Not that this fabric wanted to fray much, it was pretty much okay. Um, I did pre-wash this fabric, by the way, also. Um, I threw it in the wash so that I can, of course, throw it in the wash in the future when they are pants. So here are my pockets. I did actually zigzag stitch around the edge of those as opposed to serging it just because I wanted it a little bit less bulk and the zigzag on my machine is a little bit flatter than all that thread on my serger. So here I am trying to work out how exactly you sew these darn things together. So right sides together, makes sense. You pin the pockets in like so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew along here with half inch seam allowances. And then I will cut the curve or clip the curve on the inside, press everything down and then top stitch this area as well. I'm take this over to the machine. I'm just making sure, double checking that I'm not losing my mind. Really, there's no guarantee there. And yes, the constant refrain here on this channel, but for new view viewers, I feel the need to say it. I do sew over my pins. Um, I know people get angry with me all the time, but again, I there was a special magic ritual that took place between me and my machine where I promised it my firstborn um, in order for it to just never hit pins and so therefore it does not jokes on the machine however because I don't plan on having any children so um, really I got the better deal there. Back on the ironing table take my pins out <laughs> and then I will go ahead and clip this curve go ahead and clip here so that that will be free to allow me to do either edge stitching or in this case some top stitching. You don't have to have top stitching if you don't want to of course you could just do some edge stitching in here um, but I decided to go for it because these are like a hardy safari ready twill trouser anyway. Um, and being a more casual chino, I thought I could get away with a little bit of top stitching here. So I'm just pinning this seam, uh, so that the lining is rolled underneath 
a little bit here because I don't want it to peek out while I'm wearing the trousers. Even though this is a cute lining fabric for these pockets, I made a dress out of this butterfly bug spider print quilting cotton recently, which I will be showing you soon here. Then I just brought that over to the machine and went ahead and just top stitched about a couple millimeters away from the edge, um, quite close. Using the presser foot as a guide, really. Just with the same color and thickness of thread as well. Sometimes I use thicker top stitching thread on things, but not in this case. All right, back up here on the ironing board, I can go ahead and press everything down into place now that my pockets are in. So I'm just gonna pin it in place so it doesn't move around too much while I sew the rest of the trousers and just pin along the side seam here as well, which of course, again, will be held down when it's sewn to the other side of the pant. There's my pocket from the inside, what that looks like. All right, so pockets are in. Now we can go ahead and start sewing the side seams of these trousers. First, I'm gonna sew the right-hand side of the pants together um, down the side seam. This is the side that does not have the zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pin those together, the front and back together along the side seam of the right side. Hopefully that makes some sense. So I'm just going to sew that real fast here. Again, see, the machine doesn't hit my pins. It knows. We're friends, you know? Maybe I shouldn't get a new machine because this one and I get along so well, you know? Even if it's bob and winder is broken. And then I did go ahead and press open that seam I just sewed and um, brought it back over to the machine here so I could do some top stitching along that seam as well on the outside here. Again, just for that hardy twill trouser look, I went ahead and top stitched from the outside, which also holds that seam open and flat um, even better than pressing it does, of course. Okay, so now I can sew the other side seam, but you can see I am starting about um, eight inches down from the waist because I will have to put the zipper into the top of this side here. So I'm starting down a bit, the length of my zipper basically. But then I will sew the rest of the side seam just the same. And I did actually press this and top stitch this as well, even though I have that opening at the top for the zipper. So now I can go ahead and sew the like front center front crotch seam and the back bum seam as well. So I'm just pinning those together here. Pinning along this curve. Now this is actually the first time I have had a curved seam that I didn't end up clipping. Um, and you can see uh, possibly here if you're looking very closely that I did not serge this edge, these edges either. I did again just use the uh, zigzag stitch on my machine because it's just less bulky and I didn't want bulk in the center front or the center back. Um, so bringing that over to the machine, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that. And I did kind of like press this seam, these seams open as best I could, but I didn't want to clip them because they were going to get stress. Um, and I felt like because this, the crotch on, um, 1940s trousers is quite low, um, as opposed to being very fitted, it's kind of dropped down, um, that it wasn't, wouldn't get a lot of stretch. It wouldn't be a problem that that wasn't clipped. So, which I think worked out in the end, um. But I don't. I couldn't figure out what the official doctrine was on such things. Do you clip these curved seams on trousers or not? So if you do know the answer to that, let me know in the comments below. Um, but it seemed to work out not clipping it, which is the first time I haven't clipped a curve in a long while. Next up, you can finish the trouser legs by sewing the inseams of each side all in one long go, like you can see here. Like so. And then it is time to put in the zipper. So you can see I have this opening from that side seam on the left-hand side seam that I didn't sew all the way up to the top. So I have this opening here that I can go ahead and set my zipper into. Now I'm just going to make sure that I have that half inch seam allowance pressed down on either side as a guide as I put the zipper in. Here's a little short brown zipper because alas, I did not have a green one. I'm just going to go ahead and pin the right-hand side of the zipper, which is the back side of the pant along the teeth here and I will sew that quite close just using my regular presser foot um, to sew that down along the teeth on this side. This is the side that the lap zipper this is the side that the lap zipper hides or will lap over and so is not really seen. And again I just leave the needle down to get to the end of it. I leave the needle down reposition and then sew the rest. And then it was time to sew the lapped side of the zipper, the front side of the pant laps over the back side of the pant here along the side. So I'm just pinning that 
now. And then I can go ahead and sew this down. I did actually switch my presser foot to a zipper foot for this. Um, just because I wanted to be able to get a little bit closer because the seam allowance is so slim here. Um, so I was playing around with exactly how I wanted to do that. So I have a zipper foot here. Look at me using different presser feet. Wow. And it's very thick right here. Um, I should have made the zipper start after where this pocket ends, but it's all right. These are things we learn when making a working muslin sort of first pair situation here. Again, leave the needle down, reposition the zipper, and then you can sew the rest of it like so. All right, zipper is in, fabulous. So now all we need to do is put the waistband on and hem them, really. So the waistband, they have you sew the ends and turn those, and so I have done so here, and then I am just going to, um, I'm doing it different than the instructions for this pattern say. The instructions actually tell you to do this opposite, um, so, but I just did it this way because I prefer it this way. So I just pin this on the outside edge of my pants here, all along the top, trying to take care to make sure all the darts and tucks are going in the correct direction, and then I sewed the waistband along the top edge here of the trouser, of course. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to sew this all like so, <laughs> and then I will turn the waistband to the inside of the trouser, fold it up the, um, like fold the half inch seam allowance under, pin that, and then instead of stitching it uh, from the inside, I will come on the outside and top stitch the outside, and that top stitching will end up holding the inside seam allowance down. Um, I believe they told the instructions for this pattern say to do this the other way, it's basically to sew the waistband to the inside and then turn it to do the outside this way, but I just prefer to do it like this. So I'm turning this waistband in, pinning it like so, I'll top stitch along the outside edge. I then went ahead and put a buttonhole onto the end of the waistband, which I forgot to film, and I then did hem these by hand, which again, I did not film for you, so my apologies, but you've seen me hem things here on the channel before, you know how I do it. Um, use, use your imagination if you will, please. So here are the first pair of trousers I finished from this newly modified pattern here. Um, I'm really happy with the way these ones came out. This fabric does have a slight stretch to it, so they are even more comfortable, um, but they're comfy to begin with. This pattern is quite comfortable because really the only tight part of it would be the waistband, and this came out a little bit big in this um, stretch fabric. So these are very comfy. I could totally wear them for like a full day out uh, running around or like even like driving in the car and like for a road trip or something like that. Not that I have any road trip plans maybe coming up or anything like that. Um, obviously anything, any travel plans for this year are delayed, but I still have a few destinations on my list that I want to get to hopefully later in the year. And having something comfortable like this to wear would be nice for those kind of more casual occasions. Um, people are always asking me to make more casual things here on this channel. So here you go. I made a pair of like um, chinos basically, or uh, like dark green, brown, greenish brown chinos basically. And I hemmed these so they would just hit at the very top of my foot. Um, this is, I was looking at a lot of reproduction pants before I started, you know, deciding I wanted to just make some. And a lot of them have cuffs on them. But when I was looking at images from the 1940s, I couldn't see, of, of, women, of women's trousers basically, I couldn't see many of them had cuffs. So in the end, I actually ended up taking off the extra length I had added onto the end of these trouser pattern and then just hemming them so they just brush the top of my foot um, so I could wear them with loafers and bro brogues, brogues, you know, those men's wear ish shoes. Like brogues, brogues, you know what I mean. Just because that's what it seemed to be in the vintage illustrations and images I could find. It seemed that women's trousers actually had didn't have cuffs and that they were hemmed just to brush the top of the foot like this. They didn't have like a um, break or crease in the front. So that's what I tried to do with these ones. I was also pleased with the way the pockets came out on this wearable muslin pair, the first like official pair of these trousers I made. Um, this is gonna be a good like go-to pocket for this style for me when I'm making the more like casual versions of this trouser. Um, for the next version of this trouser, which I will show you, I did indeed make another pair here. This pair is in wool. Um, this is a lightweight suiting wool from Mood Fabrics again, and then I did line these in a rayon lining fabric, but I left off the pockets completely, both because I wanted a sleeker, um, more like suiting kind of look and just wanted everything to be more streamlined and not worry about pockets with this one but then also just because and I, I think it gives it a little bit more of a formal look as well um, but also because it's a time-saving measure the pockets do take extra time so both just you know to have a sleeker pair in this nicer wool fabric I decided to go with no pockets on this second pair of trousers here I'm very happy with the way these ones came out I basically have been searching for these this exact pair of pants out at the store for a year or more than a year now and just haven't been able to find anything I really like and I'm very happy with these ones they're very soft and comfortable to wear because the 
lining inside is very nice and silky feeling. It's a rayon Bemberg lining, Bemberg rayon viscose lining, whatever, from Mood. And I will link the fabrics for all these, um, both these pairs of trousers and the lining in the description if I can still find them on Mood because I think they should still be available. So in the end, I'm really happy with how this pattern worked out for me. I wasn't sure how much modification I was gonna have to do, if my fixes that I had to make were gonna work, but it seems like everything worked out in the end. I'm super happy with the fit. They're super, super comfortable again. So that's gonna be really nice for me, especially in travel <laughs> situations, which are way off now, hopefully still coming down the line eventually here, but we'll see. Um, but they will be very useful for that and also for running around town. Again, not something I can do right now, but in the future, perhaps. Um, I, again, like that meme that some of you probably have seen, I wonder if the thrift stores miss me as much as I miss them. But I digress. As always, thank you for joining me here in my sewing room today. I've been spending quite a lot of time down here recently just because I've been trying to keep my hands busy while my brain has been having a little bit of an extra extra bees, you know, going around in my mind recently. I think we all had a little bit of extra stress um, and also a little bit of a stir craziness going on because we're all inside. But I've been trying to at least keep my hands busy if I can't use my brain as much. So we'll see. I have made a couple of extra things that I want to show you all next week. So look forward to that if you want to see the results of my <laughs> being stuck in my sewing room. I hope you're all staying safe and sane out there and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.